Inside the Magic, show number 394 for October 21st, 2012. It is Sunday, October 21st, 2012. This is show 394 of Inside the Magic. As always, I'm your host, Ricky Briganti. Got another great show packed with Disney and theme park news and plenty more fun. And before we jump into all of that, I do invite you to visit InsideTheMagic.net. There you'll find all of our podcasts, videos, photos, news, articles, and plenty more. And if you ever have any news, tips, questions, comments, anything else you want to send in, you can write to me via email at Ricky at InsideTheMagic.net, or you can always call and leave a message at 407 494 for ITM. That's 4486. And now, let's get on with the show. This week's episode of Inside the Magic is brought to you by Magical Travel. Travel the world with Disney. Experience hassle-free first-class service with an Adventures by Disney vacation. You can receive up to a $600 Visa gift card when you book an Adventures by Disney destination vacation with Magical Travel. Call Magical Travel today at 866-207-8387 or visit them online at MagicalTravel.com to receive a free price quote. And, of course, be sure to mention Inside the Magic to receive your free Disney gift card for qualifying bookings when you book your Disney vacation with Magical Travel. And thanks very much to uh, listeners and viewers like you, and uh, especially to Stephen Brumfield for your donation this week, and of course all of our other monthly recurring donation subscribers, and anyone who clicks through the affiliate links, uh, Amazon.com, etc., over at InsideTheMagic.net. It all supports the show, and uh, thank you very much for all of that. And now, let's get started with a trip around the world. So it is indeed still the month of October, which means we're going to be littering in uh, even more Halloween excitement this week, amongst other things. And, uh, of course, I'm playing a little Halloween-y type uh, music here in the background. Started out with a little bit of Haunted Mansion holiday music. Now we've got some music from Phantom Manor while I go through the news here, and there'll be uh, a bit more Halloween throughout the show. So, uh, you know, my favorite time of the year. Can't help but talk about that uh, as much as I possibly can. So, uh, but before we get to all of that, got plenty of uh, fun Disney news this week. Actually, a surprise announcement is what's going to start off the news uh, this week. It was just a few days ago in New York's Times Square. Disney announced the uh, promotion that they're going to have for Disney Parks at uh, Walt Disney World, as well as Disneyland for 2013 for next year. It is something they're calling Limited Time Magic. What a bizarre name. Definitely sounds like something, uh, something very sort of official and, you know, not, not very magical limited time magic. Well, what that means is that each of the 52 weeks of uh, 2013, there's going to be a different special experience. They're going to appear and they're going to disappear one per week. Again, that's at uh, Walt Disney World and at Disneyland. Now, Disney hasn't revealed their plans for all 52 offerings, uh, but they have revealed sort of a sampling of what that'll include. uh, And I'll run through what they have revealed so far. There's going to be a true love week, which uh, they put as celebrate romance and enchantment throughout Valentine's week with special moments and entertainment geared toward lovebirds, uh, which will include uh, the castle lighting up in red and pink, uh, Disney princesses and princes in special meetings, some prefix menus at restaurants, and some Valentine's collectibles. There will be an Independence Week, which of course will have plenty of red, white, and blue, uh, Fourth of July fireworks party, which they always have Fourth of July fireworks anyway, uh, patriotic lighting on the castles on both coasts, Mickey Mouse appearing in his patriotic finest, and Of course, plenty of merchandise to buy as well. Uh, This one particularly interests me. There's going to be a long-lost Friends Week in which they say lesser-known Disney characters will, as they put it, move from the shadows to the spotlight. Now, the examples that they give, of course, everybody... That's great, you know, rare characters who love to see uh, rare characters show up in the parks. But the examples they gave are not particularly rare. They said Flick, Carabelle Cow, Remy, Tweedledee, and Tweedledum. 
I'm not sure I could call those rare characters necessarily. I would love to see them pull out the old Disney Afternoon characters. I would absolutely go crazy if I finally got the chance to uh, have my picture with Darkwing Duck and Launchpad and, you know, Huey, Dewey, and Louie and that whole gang. Um, so we'll see how, how Long Lost Friends, Long Lost Friends Week really is. There's also going to be a Pirate Week in which, uh, of course, Jack Sparrow will come out in uh, uh, a Pirate Palooza, as they're putting it with pirate bands and meet and greets and more. Here's a particularly bizarre one that they're planning. I'm not sure what to make of this. Dapper Dans sing boy bands. That's right. The iconic Main Street USA Quartet will have a special finale of their show where they're going to sing a medley of hits from One Direction, In Sync, and the Backstreet Boys. Yeah, that should be... Uh that should be pretty interesting. Uh, this one, uh, also, I'm particularly uh, fond of, and I will definitely be there uh, for, for Unleash the Villains. On a Friday the 13th in 2013 at uh, Hollywood Studios, the park is going to stay open until the 13th hour, 1 a.m., and it's going to feature a uh, villainous dance party with Maleficent, Captain Hook, Jafar, some limited edition collectibles, and nighttime mischief, as they put it. That's going to be September uh, 13th. So, very, very... Uh, very interesting uh, potential there. There's been many years of, uh, of people talking about, you know, rumors. Oh, what if Hollywood Studios could have some sort of special uh, spookier event, a Halloween event, if you will. And this isn't exactly Halloween, September 13th, but it's gearing up to Halloween time. It'll be on Friday the 13th. Maybe this is Disney's way of sort of testing the waters and seeing if perhaps uh, it will uh, work really, if people would be excited about this type of thing. I certainly am, and I would love to see this expand uh, even more into a more glorious uh, sort of uh, nighttime, you know, villains sort of activity. Uh, I hope that's what they're doing. Uh, anyway, one more that they announced uh, that would be uh, part of this uh, limited time magic is Golden Horseshoe Review. The Frontierland show at Disneyland is going to return for not just a week, but for an entire month. Uh, so that should be pretty exciting as well. To, uh, to mark this announcement in Times Square, Disney built their own little bit of limited time magic. It was a three-story ice castle made of 45,000 pounds of ice, and they erected it and uh, basically let it melt because it was available for, well, a limited time. Hence, you know, limited time magic. So those who were in New York a few days ago in the morning got to see it, and it was melted, and then it was gone. Uh, also, during the event on hand were uh, Minnie Mouse, as well as Cinderella, and Cinderella was sporting something new. She was wearing her new dress that'll be seen in the parks uh, very soon, a sparkly sort of new style of dress, along with her new hairstyle, which is sort of a part of the new modern twist on the princesses that have sort of modern versions of, of the hair and a lot of mixed reactions on what that looks like as well. I can't really describe it any better than that because I'm not a stylist and I don't know how to describe hair. So, uh, But it's hair and it's kind of swoopy in the front instead of straight bangs, I guess. I don't know. Anyway, uh, so there it is. A limited time magic. Uh, they said that they're going to announce each week's experiences uh, in the parks. They'll announce it on DisneyWorld.com, on Disneyland.com, as well as on Facebook, Twitter, and the Disney Parks blog, or at least some combination thereof. So you're going to have to stay tuned every single week throughout 2013 to know what's going on in the parks. So, out here at Walt Disney World, there are certainly some interesting developments this week. The first of which is over at the Country Bear Jamboree in Frontierland, where uh, it's been down for a little while for some refurbishment. It came back in a very bizarrely updated fashion. This uh, classic show was cut by about five minutes. It's about a ten-minute show now instead of about 15 minutes. And some of the characters now feature some new hairstyles, some new costumes. Uh, some of the songs have been moved around and tweaked. Some of the dialogue has been cut. It's a... Uh, essentially Country Bears light at this point, where they claim that, uh, the Imagineers claim that they went back to some original concept art for these new costumes that the bears are wearing. Uh, apparently the bears are uh, a little bit more enhanced now, the animation's a little bit better and things like that. I actually haven't been over to the Magic Kingdom to check out the new version, and honestly, uh, Country Bear Jamboree never been one of my favorite attractions. I, you know, a lot of people are up in arms about this change. I eh, don't really care. Uh, but uh, certainly for Country Bear fans, it's it's unfortunate that a, a good third of the show has been uh, has been cut out of there. Happy haunts materialize. 
So also over at the uh, Magic Kingdom, we've been talking about New Fantasyland plenty uh, lately. Uh, certainly last week I was talking all about the previews that were going on and also mentioned that the annual pass holder preview uh, sign-up did not go so well. Uh, a lot of people were very upset about the fact that they couldn't get through online to sign up. Well, this week Disney sent out a, an email to all uh, Walt Disney World annual pass holders uh, essentially apologizing for the uh, the issues that they were having. As they wrote in the email, quote, the demand for New Fantasyland has exceeded even our expectations and we are working quickly to create additional preview opportunities, end quote. So uh, they're going to try to come out with more previews, I suppose. Of course, uh, right now, New Fantasyland is uh, in cast member previews, essentially, which means guests can't get in at the moment unless you're friends with a cast member. Uh, in another few days, that will move on to the next phase of previews, and then November 19th is when it's going to sort of reopen to everybody uh, in the park. So that's the state of New Fantasyland for the moment. And uh, all along the same lines for New Fantasyland, uh, when I got off the uh, the Little Mermaid ride uh, last week, I was surprised to see this you know brand new ride, very elaborate queue, very elaborate ride. It did not dump into a gift shop, and there was really no mermaid merchandise to be found anywhere in New Fantasyland. Well, Disney, of course, is changing that very quickly. In fact, right now in Sir Mickey's, not too far from there, an existing store in Fantasyland, uh, an array of Under the Sea Journey of the Little Mermaid merchandise is uh, indeed now available, much as it has been at Disney. California Adventure for a while, and the most interesting of the merchandise amongst plushes and t-shirts and all that stuff is the famous Dingle Hopper, which anybody uh, who has seen The Little Mermaid, of course, knows, knows it's actually a hairbrush or, or a fork, uh, but used as a hairbrush, and this is actually a hairbrush shaped like a fork that you can use as a hairbrush. So kind of a fun little piece of merchandise that's uh, now available both out here in Florida and in California. Another interesting update happened over at the Magic Kingdom just a few days ago, and this is something else I have not had a chance to see in person yet, and I have a specific reason for that. Mermaids have been added to Pirates of the Caribbean straight out of the most recent movie uh, on, uh, on Stranger Tides, right? That's the most recent. Uh, apparently there's a water projection effect around the boats as well as a bit of an effect on the beach in one of the early scenes of the attraction. The song that the mermaids sing in the movie is also present in there, but uh, I said I haven't seen it yet, and that's because I've heard... The effect is not quite done, and I wanted to wait until it was a complete, ready-to-go effect uh, before I head over there. So I'll wait another, you know, few days before uh, before checking it out, and, uh, and we'll see how that goes. From what I've heard, it's pretty good effect. Uh, you know, kind of a subtle one, not interfering with everything. Pretty kind of creepy. So looking forward to seeing that when they do uh, sort of make it official. Now, we've been talking a lot in recent weeks about the addition of uh, RFID technology into the parks, be it FastPass Plus or checking in, checking out, using it to purchase at hotels, etc. Well, John, uh, Inside the Magic Listener, John just wrote to me, uh, I think today or yesterday, and sent me a picture asking if I noticed the RFID uh, little uh, kiosk area that's in the Be Our Guest restaurant, and I did not. In the quick ordering uh, lunchtime service kiosk area, there is one of those little round Mickey heads that have been showing up around the FastPass Plus testing around the parks and apparently it's all going to tie in here I have a feeling in December at the What's Next presentation that they're going to be doing as part of the big new Fantasyland press event uh, I think that's when they're going to finally announce this whole concept of RFID and the FastPass Plus and perhaps these wristbands everybody's been talking about the magic band and how it's all going to tie together so you can just tap away and buy stuff and get into your room and etc uh, etc et speaking of rooms however I received a call from uh, Inside the Magic listener Mike uh, this week who was letting me know uh, I think it was last week on the show that I had mentioned uh, somebody called in about adding RFID uh, access to Port Orleans well let's hear what Mike has to say this week hey Ricky, hey, Ricky it's Mike Hamilton from Surprise Arizona uh, just kind of add some more information about the RF room keys at Disney World I was just in Disney World uh, last week and staying at Kidani Village at Animal Kingdom Village, and the rooms there also have the RF uh, room keys already. And it was uh, real nice. I didn't even have to get my room key out of my passport at pouch a couple times. I held it up to the door and unlocked it and opened it and went in. It's nice at the end of a long day with some kids in hand and all their stuff. And it makes it a lot easier to get in. Uh, keep up the good work on the show. Bye. 
So great. Uh, thanks, Mike, for that call. It seems like there are actually quite a number of, uh, of resorts around or hotels around the Walt Disney World Resort that have added RFID access. In fact, uh, uh, Grebo 101 in the chat room as a, as a boardwalk added them recently as well. So it's definitely uh, spreading uh, around. It seems like it's going to be the norm now to have the uh, nice handy just tap against the door and get in instead of having to slide the uh, cards in and out. So great technology. Uh, definitely look forward to seeing uh, once Disney uh, announces it all officially that that is the sort of the wave of the future with interaction uh, around the parks. But uh, turning away from Disney here for a moment, here's some news that was uh, was rather puzzling this week. Uh, of course, uh, Halloween Horror Nights over at Universal Orlando has a very famous show, Bill and Ted's Excellent Halloween Adventure. It's been going on every year, uh, almost as long as Halloween Horror Nights has been around. They poke fun at pop culture, parody a lot of it. It's all in good fun. Uh, of course, every once in a while, some controversy brews around the show when they poke fun at something that uh, people don't take you know, lightly to. And this time around, of course, it's an election year and they have a bit in the show this year with a presidential rap. It's a rap contest with uh, Barack Obama against Mitt Romney, of course. Uh, and uh, there are, you know, some some expletives used. It's an adult show. It's an adult event. And uh, some, uh, well, Fox News picked up the story and uh, decided that it was an anti-Romney pro-Obama rant that they went on in the show, despite the fact that the writer at Fox News uh, actually did not see the show uh, uh, they on you know third party reporting essentially hearsay reporting decided that it was all pro Obama and wrote this nice long article about how Universal perhaps should not be taking a stance and influencing those who go to the parks etc etc well I went to uh, Horror Nights uh, last night and uh, decided to stop into the Bill and Ted show to see if Universal had a reply to that maybe poking fun at it maybe you know doing something uh, along those lines well unfortunately they actually ended up cutting a good deal of that presidential uh, uh, skit if you will about half the rap was simply quote-unquote forgotten the lyrics were just simply gone and uh, a lot of the the jokes that were in there the jabs at, at, at you know between the Romney and Obama actors that were there were just removed simply so it was kind of a knee-jerk reaction from Universal unfortunately in response to this controversy that has arisen uh, to their uh, you know credit they were getting pretty poorly blasted on their Facebook page by people who were outraged by all of it. And, and, you know, this is one of those instances where you just got to take things lightly. It's a theme park. It's entertainment. And it's it's parody. Absolutely. I mean, Saturday Night Live spoofs the elections of the presidents and everything all the time. And, you know, for, for Universal to sort of uh, have that knee-jerk reaction and just change the show on a whim as a result of the controversy, uh, presumably, of course, uh, is, is sad. So thought that was worth a mention here. And while we're on the topic of uh, other parks around Orlando, I received a fun uh, thing in the mail uh, just a few days ago from uh, from SeaWorld. It's this sort of uh, fake piece of ice inviting me to come to the IAPA convention next month, which I was planning on attending anyway, as I have uh, for the last couple of years. I always forget. IAPA is International Association of Attractions and something or other. Anyway, it's a, essentially the, the amusement park uh, a convention here in Orlando. And this is uh, promoting uh, SeaWorld's Art Antarctica uh, realm, as they're putting in specifically the Empire of the Penguin attraction that's uh, we don't know much about, but it should be pretty exciting. So more details are going to come out for that uh, from SeaWorld uh, next month. Pretty excited to hear about that. It should be one heck of an attraction. It's supposed to be this trackless journey through this cold environment, what they're calling the coldest theme park attraction on the planet. So that should be uh, that should be interesting. But of course, as I said, this is still October. We are still talking a, a bit of Halloween here. And what I found to be very interesting this week uh, was a D23 article uh, posted, uh, of course, to the D23 uh, official website. And the article was entitled Disney's Dark Side. And it spotlighted the Halloween events of Hong Kong Disneyland and Disneyland Paris, a terrific nights, etc. As they put it, there are nightmarish, spectacular, wicked parties and hair-raising attraction overlays. They posted some pictures from those events of, you know, guys in with chainsaws and bloody outfits and all this stuff that you absolutely have never seen in a United States Disney park. And I was thrilled to see D23 post about that and really make it uh, well known that there are these 
these other types of events going on for Halloween around the world. Unfortunately, they're not happening in, happening in the United States. As I said earlier, Hollywood Studios has always been the rumored spot for if that were to ever happen, uh, that could be the place. And so I'm crossing my fingers that it seems to be building up some steam and that perhaps in the year to, years to come, Disney will uh, continue to sort of test those waters and see if a uh, more adult-themed uh, Halloween event would work here. Now, let's uh, turn away from uh, theme parks completely, where I will put in a quick mention that if uh, you are a fan of the movie The Great Mouse Detective, it is now out on Blu-ray, and I posted a review of the release over at InsideTheMagic.net. In short, great movie. Uh, it's been a long time since I've seen it. I forgot most of what it was about and who was in it, and great actors. I uh, love the fact that Alan Young, voice of Scrooge McDuck, is in there, and uh, uh, just everything across the board. It's a great Sherlock Holmes-style story, in fact, literally. Sherlock Holmesy, um, with Sherlock Holmes even in the film at one point. Uh, so it's a, no definitely a good movie. Um, TV, you know, Blu-ray release, eh, not not great uh, extras there, but uh, uh, the Blu-ray looks great and the movie is great. And uh, you can read more of my thoughts over at uh, InsideTheMagic.net. <laughs> And of course, we've been talking about uh, Frank and Weenie uh, recently. I had a, a more than glowing review of the film. Absolutely loved it. Unfortunately, the box office results for Frank and Weenie have not been great. Hotel Transylvania really capitalized on sort of that spooky vibe this year and featuring, you know, lots of the big name comedic actors. And it was in color and CG and, you know, all that stuff. It wasn't stop motion and black and white and inventive. Uh, so uh, Frank and Weenie, as much as I would love to say everybody go out and see it 50 times, um, it's just simply not doing well at the box office. Fortunately, screenwriter... Uh, uh, John August uh, on his blog at johnaugust.com and, and Chad sent this to me inside the magic listener Chad uh, he posted some thoughts on on uh, his film Frank and Weenie not doing very well at the box office and he was still fairly optimistic which was nice to see uh, he made the point that had Frank and Weenie opened in the exact same week one year prior it actually would have opened in second place whereas this year it opened in fifth place which is a big difference with the same amount of money uh, just depends on what else is out there at the time of course they couldn't have predicted Hotel Transylvania would be out at the same time it just so happened to be that and he feels that uh, much in the same way the Nightmare Before Christmas did not do uh, particularly well at the box office when it first came out, but has since become a hugely popular film. He thinks uh, Frank and Weenie will do the same once it hits home release and just kind of steamroll over the coming years, and I have to agree. It's just such a great movie. It's going to be one, become one of those sort of classics that you have to see eventually and uh, and, and really you know sit down and, and enjoy it to its fullest. And uh, again, that's johnaugust.com if you want to read that. Some more movie news. Disney apparently has picked up uh, rights to a uh, to produce a, a big screen version of the children's book Alexander and the Terrible, Horrible, No Good, Very Bad Day. Uh, I definitely remember that from years ago. I haven't heard that title in a long time. And uh, apparently Steve Carell is attached to play Alexander's dad in the film. There's no director, no, uh, not too much more information, but uh, apparently that's something that is in the works as a future Disney film. Turning to much sh more short-form entertainment, Disney Interactive has launched their very first online well, short-form animated video series starring Swampy the Gator, of course, from uh, the Where's My Water mobile game, which has been hugely popular. The new uh, short-form uh, animated series is called Swampy's Underground Adventures. For now, it lives at Disney.com, as well as on Disney's YouTube channel, which is YouTube.com slash Disney Shows. Uh, starting in November, the uh, short episodes starring Swampy will uh, be airing uh, on Disney Channel as well. And uh, now I'm going to round out the news with some uh, really bizarre kind of turn, uh, series of events that happened this week. I a few days ago, uh, thinking about Halloween and and everything that is involved there. Uh, of course, the Haunted Mansion, my favorite attraction, has plenty of ghosts in it. You know, the hitchhiking ghosts and Madame Leota and all the ballroom dancers, and you know, it got me thinking. Well, has anybody ever seen real ghosts in the Haunted Mansion? I haven't. I've only seen, you know, Disney's ghosts, but I would wondered if there was any sort of haunted encounter. So I put that question out there on Twitter and on Facebook this week and got a lot of responses. Apparently there's several ghost stories that have been going around regarding the Haunted Mansion. Uh, particularly several people responded and said there was a, a mention of an of a old man with a cane that people have seen. Uh, I think it was specifically Disney 
Lands Haunted Mansion, they were talking about this sort of ghostly man with a cane has made multiple appearances. And then there's apparently this young boy that has also been spotted here and there in the mansion as uh, this sort of spooky apparition. Many have said they've seen him uh, crying in a corner somewhere. There's been a, a sort of a story about, uh, you know, mom sprinkling ashes. And of course, you know, you never know if there's any truth to any of these things. But what made this particularly interesting is a uh, message that I got from an anonymous cast member uh, after I had posed that question saying they had some kind of uh, quote-unquote proof of the ghosts in the mansion, which of course intrigued me. And I've been going back and forth with this person, not quite ready to share all the details of this yet because I'm waiting to receive everything in. But what I can share at the moment is just a single frame from a, and I posted this online already, those of you watching the video version, you can see this. I've got a single frame that I can share right now of this video that I was sent, which is, you know, it, it's the ballroom scene. It's very blurry, but it seems to look like a, a boy kind of sitting there, uh, maybe, or a, a, a guy, or, or maybe a girl, I don't know. It's, it's very interesting, and I, I've, I've been promised I was going to be sent more of this video very, very soon, uh, so I'm hoping to post that uh, probably on Monday. I, I'm supposed to have that today sometime, uh, so check back to, uh, to InsideTheMagic.net on Monday, hopefully, uh, for an update on sort of this, uh, if you've been following it on Twitter and Facebook, it's really, really bizarre, kind of the way this all came together and I don't know I mean maybe it'll turn out to be just kind of some silly nothing but maybe it'll be something cool I don't know we'll see so figured I'd mention that here so uh, that's it for your news from around the world this week And today's tip has nothing to do with Halloween, but is still a very good tip. It comes in from uh, Brant in Houston, who writes, I've been listening to your podcast for many years and always found it to be a great source of Disney news, reviews, information, and tips, and I usually listen to uh, listen on the way to work. It's a great way to take a bit of Disney with me every day on the long drive. I've always found the tip for today's segment to be a big help, and I think I found a tip that may be useful to other Listeners, my wife and I booked a trip to Disney World uh, for October of this year back in early July, including the dining plan. Two weeks after making the reservation, which I had paid for in full at the time of booking, I came across information that Disney was offering the free dining plan promotion for the dates we would be at Disney World, and I figured I would either have to cancel my existing reservation and go through the hassle of waiting for a refund before I could book that again, or uh, that making a change to my reservation would be a hassle uh, in itself, but I felt like I needed to at least call and see what could be done. Much to my surprise, when I called to discuss the fact, uh, the Disney reservation agent told me no problem at all within five minutes on the phone uh, a after holding the normal 20 minutes or so, of course. My package had been modified to have the free dining plan, and she already put in the process request for almost $600 credit that I was going to receive. She was friendly, fast, efficient, and by the time I hung up the phone, an email was waiting with the notification of my reservation changes in credit, as well as showing uh, online at Disney World. Dot com. All that being said, my tip is that if you have already booked a trip with Disney, keep an ear and an eye out for special promotions like the free dining plan that they're offering and see if it lines up with the dates your trip is being booked. If so, you might be due a nice refund, and uh, in our case, Disney will uh, still be getting since we're now going to attend Mickey's Not-So-Scary Halloween Party, as well as expand our souvenir and food and wine budget. Hope this tip helps some other listeners and uh, keep up the great work with the podcast. Brent, uh, definitely a great tip, and I said it had nothing to do with Halloween, but apparently it does have a little bit because you're going to take that extra money and go to Not So Scary, which is a great way uh, to uh, to reinvest that money in, uh, that you're saving into Disney. But yeah, definitely watch those deals. Uh, you know, hotel rates change, certainly dining plans come and go, and you never know what kind of promotions Disney might come out with. And yeah, they're definitely happy to sort of rework your reservation to, uh, to fit in. To, uh, to whatever, you know, is the, the most cost-effective for you. So uh, definitely a great idea there. Everybody else, send your tips into tips at InsideTheMagic.net. And now, before we jump into this week's main features, it's time for another little Inside the Magic dance break. Q 
can't help but play a little more Be Our Guest while New Fantasyland is still floating around out there just waiting to grand open. And of course, the reason I'm playing this is because of the number one dance game brand, Just Dance, meeting the magical world of Disney and the newest and coolest video game for the whole family, Just Dance Disney Party. Dance to songs from some of your favorite beloved Disney classic movies like The Little Mermaid, Beauty and the Beast, Jungle Book, and Cinderella. Plus, you can dance along to songs from the coolest Disney Channel shows like Shake It Up, Ant Farm, Jesse and Phineas and Ferb. And it's perfect for kids of all ages. Just Dance Disney Party is a great way to keep the family active, and the non-stop shuffle feature lets kids dance continuously to their favorite songs. Just Dance Disney Party is going to be available very, very soon, just a couple of days from now on uh, Connect for Xbox 360 and Nintendo. We on October 23rd. $29.99 is the price available at all major retailers. Back to the song. Indeed, I'm going to be talking about Wreck-It Ralph, which I had the pleasure of seeing this weekend, courtesy of a wonderful Disney Parks blog meetup event. It was uh, still a couple of weeks before Wreck-It Ralph hits theaters, but I really, really enjoyed the movie. Before I actually review the movie itself in a completely spoiler-free manner, I want to talk a little bit more uh, about this actual meetup that the Disney Parks blog held. Uh, as I said, just this weekend, it was early morning on a Saturday morning. I had to meet at Downtown Disney at Disney Quest which is an appropriate place to meet for a movie that's themed all about video games. And uh, the meetup began by uh, checking in, and upon checking everybody who was there, which was, uh, gosh, it must have been hundreds of people attending this meetup uh, to see the movie and have some fun at Disney Quest as well, everybody was given a Wreck-It Ralph medal, which actually ties into the uh, the plot of the film. Those of you watching the, uh, the video version, you can see my lovely shiny gold medal here that says Wreck-It Ralph, has the logo on one side, and if you flip it over, it says Hero on the back. Not sure if they're going to sell these or not. I saw people already threw them up on eBay and are getting... Plenty of money for him, but I'm going to keep in mind, of course. Uh, but anyway, uh, after that, uh, everybody headed on inside uh, Disney Quest, where the fun began. Got to spend a couple of hours there, of course, playing uh, some video games, uh, as well as some uh, special Wreck-It Ralph opportunities. Uh, first, uh, in walking in, getting off the elevator, was immediately greeted by uh, not the Wreck-It Ralph character that's going to be in the parks uh, later this month, uh, but it was a large, sort of life-sized, almost, uh, statue of... Uh, the man himself, Wreck-It Ralph. Great photo opportunity there. Uh, in addition, uh, they had set up uh, some great video gaming opportunities. You could step into uh, Game Central Station, as it's called in the film, walk through sort of this brick area, and uh, and once inside, they had a number of, uh, of Fix-It Felix Jr. Uh, games set up that uh, everybody could play which was nice. I had a chance to play that game back at the San Diego Comic-Con in July for the first time, and so it was great to uh, to get a hold of that once again, and I played and played and played until uh, I got a, uh, a high score this time around, so that was uh, fun. My score was 28,600, and it was still standing when I left a couple hours later, which was uh, nice. See if anybody... I don't know how long the, the machines are going to stick around at Disney Quest, uh, but uh, if you are over there, see if you can find the machine that has... Uh, RBB initials uh, for the top score and see if you can see if you can top mine. Anyway, there was a in addition uh, to playing the Fix It Felix Jr. video game uh, and taking a picture of the statue, there was also a chalk artist who was working on a, uh, a Wreck-It Ralph uh, piece of artwork, just live art going on there. I asked her what was going to become of the art in the end and she said that it was going to end up in some manager's office somewhere at Disney, so uh, lucky to that person. Uh, there was also some Lego building going on, which which was kind of fun. One side had some Legos that looked like it was straight out of an 8-bit video game that said, I can fix it. 
And the other side said Wreck It, of course, which is uh, which is pretty fun there. There was also some gaming competitions going on within uh, Disney Quest where you could win some Wreck-It Ralph prizes, mostly t-shirts. Uh, they had, you know, Pac-Man uh, set up as well as a number of other games and whoever got the highest scores or the most wins or the most rounds won or whatever, whatever, uh, was going to, to win some of that stuff. Alas, I did not win any of that, sadly. Uh, but that's alright. I already have a Wreck-It Ralph shirt uh, from Comic-Con back in July, so I'm happy with that. From there, uh, once all of the Disney Quest portion of the morning ended, it was time to actually go over to the AMC Theater at Downtown Disney to see Wreck-It Ralph the film. I should note, of course, all of this was uh, a meetup from the Disney Parks blog. It was simply uh, waiting for them to announce it, sending over an email to uh, a special email address, and the first however many people got accepted, and that was it. It was all a completely free event, which is wonderful when Disney does these things. The Disney Parks blog has been doing some excellent meetups, and this was you know, another in the long line of just some uh, some fun free times uh, which is great and it's a good promotional opportunity for them as well they haven't posted too much about it yet but I uh, they were shooting video and photos throughout the whole thing and I suspect either tomorrow or uh, yeah, probably you know sometime this week they'll be posting uh, some more results from all of that what was uh, very interesting of course this was an advanced screening of the film and much like the press screenings that I normally go to they were not allowing any electronic devices whatsoever into the theaters you either had to leave it in your car or uh, or check it with their security so that meant no cell phones obviously no video Video cameras or still cameras, anything like that. They want to be very protective about piracy and make sure that nobody there was going to, uh, you know, record and post the brand new film online, which of course would be silly. The flip side of this, however, was before the movie began, they decided to give a little introduction in the theater and then bring out the for the very first time the Wreck It Ralph character, the uh, uh, one that's going to be at Disney's Hollywood Studios. They announced beginning uh, in a week, October 28th, is when he's going to start showing up over there along with Vanellope Von Schweetz. Vanellope, unfortunately, was not there, but they did show off this uh, Wreck-It Ralph character, and those of you watching the video version, you see a rendering of it. Unfortunately, I didn't have, you know, a camera, <laughs> of course, because I said they took it. Uh, well, they didn't take it. I left it in the car, but I, there was no way to take a picture, so I couldn't show you what he looks like, but you can imagine he's Wreck-It Ralph. He's huge. He's got a giant head and giant hands and definitely a massive character to take a picture with, and I look forward to seeing him over in the parks uh, in a week. Uh, over at Disney's Hollywood Studios. So from there, it was uh, it was time to actually watch the movie, but it wasn't quite time for, uh, for Wreck-It Ralph yet because uh, there, of course, is a short that comes before uh, Wreck-It Ralph, which is fantastic. I'm going to turn the video game music here down now because this has nothing to do with, uh, with sort of the theme of Wreck-It Ralph. Well, maybe I'll play a little sort of jazzy tune here because it fits a little bit better with the short film that is, uh, is before Wreck-It Ralph. This is what's going to be seen in theaters, and it was something I've been looking forward to seeing for such a long time. Disney's Paper Man. This is something uh, we heard about from uh, Jeremiah when he reported to us from the D23 Destination D event a couple of months ago. He was blown away by this Paper Man short and finally had a chance to see it this weekend. Cute little sort of love story, uh, essentially dialogue-free short film with these two, really focusing on these two very relatable characters. As I said, I don't want to spoil anything for anyone, of course. I'm not going to go into too much detail here about what Paper Man is and what it is not and what it is all about, but I can tell you it's the visuals of Paper Man that make it so very, very special. It's this sort of crazy new hybrid of 2G, 2D animation, CG animation and 3D, as in wearing your glasses type 3D animation. The still frames, if you see, you know, a, a picture of this, you know, a still frame from the Paper Man short film, it looks like a 2D animated film, but it's actually rendered, from what I could tell, in computer graphics. It's this great sort of cell-shaded look, but it really feels like you're watching this, this wonderful blend of the two mediums. Add to that, uh, add to that the fact that you're watching it in 3D in the theater. There's this sort of like flat layers of depth, almost like Viewmaster style, but it's moving. And I mean, there's there's some I don't know. It's really really difficult to describe. Seeing Paper Man in 3D is reason enough alone to see Wreck-It Ralph in 3D because it just looks great. It may not have been quite as mind blowing as everybody uh, everybody has said, uh, but it was definitely an, uh, a very very enjoyable short that I thought was uh, hopefully something they're going to use the same sort of look and feel for the future. Definitely a, a very, very cool 
short film, and uh, and I look forward to uh, to seeing it again at some point. So now we're going to go back to the uh, crazy dubstep music here in the background as we talk to uh, talk about rather the Wreck It Ralph movie itself. So Wreck It Ralph, if you're not familiar with the film whatsoever, uh, the title character is. Uh, is Ralph himself. Uh, he's the villain of the game, uh, the bad guy of the game, that is, uh, Fix-It Felix Jr. And uh, the premise of the film is that, uh, well, Ralph doesn't want, really want to be uh, bad anymore. He wants to be a good guy. He wants to be liked. And so the film follows his adventures through the video game world, uh, trying to sort of step out of his mold and find a way to be accepted amongst the other characters of the film. And really the film focuses around uh, uh, four specific characters. There's Ralph, there is uh, Fix-It Felix Jr. Of course, Ralph is voiced by John C. Riley. Uh, Fix-It Felix is voiced by uh, Jack McBrayer. Then you've got a, a cute little girl character, Vanellope Von Schweetz, voiced by Sarah Silverman, and she plays a very, very important role in the film, far more than I actually had anticipated she's in there. And then there's Jane Lynch playing, and I can't even remember her character name at the moment, but she's this tough uh, uh, first-person shooter style uh, sergeant uh, uh, woman, obviously, and uh, definitely a funny fun character there. So was Wreck-It Ralph a good film? Absolutely. I enjoyed it uh, beginning to end. It was not uh, not, you know, a lot of people are saying, oh, this is the Roger Rabbit of video games. It's because it's got all these licensed characters. And uh, I wouldn't put it on sort of the classic film level as Roger Rabbit. That's one of my favorite films of all time. And I just can't you know, hype this up that much. But with that said, Wreck-It Ralph is a very, very good film. Uh, From the very beginning, you get that video game influence throughout this movie. Uh, There's this amazing twist on the logo at the beginning of the film that I don't want to spoil for you, but it's just from the moment it starts at the beginning, uh, you know you're entering this video game world. And I had already seen the first 10 minutes or so of this film a couple of times. I think they showed some at the uh, D23 Expo, they showed some at Comic-Con, and uh, even seeing it now it was clear that they had made some tweaks made some changes so it was still fresh for me and uh, as you've seen if you've seen the trailers for Wreck-It Ralph you've seen some of this beginning of the uh of the film and it's just packed with video game references and video game characters from real video games you've got you know Bowser from the Super Mario series you've got Zangief from uh, the Street Fighter series and Ken and Ryu are there from Street Fighter and uh, and Bison and uh, and the Ghost from Pac-Man and Sonic the Hedgehog and I'm not spoiling anything here because all these are, are well known and, and publicized out there like I said they're in the trailers for the film and it's fun to sort of spot and pick out all these characters that you know from these classic video games uh, um, it's uh, it's just uh, that is one of the best parts of the film is to just kind of look at all the little tiny hidden bits and that's why I want to see it again and again because uh, I'm sure I missed plenty of references uh, of, to video games throughout the whole film but of course I film can't just hinge on being you know referring to things it's got to actually have a story it's got to be interesting it's got to be entertaining and it is Wreck-It Ralph is very funny uh, I found myself laughing out loud uh, a lot it's even a bit touching at times but for the most part it's just a comedy through and through video game fans will certainly get the most enjoyment out of it uh, because of all the hidden gems but it's not only about that in fact surprisingly a good chunk of the movie uh uh, it takes place in uh, uh, an area of the film that has a lot of candy references. So as much there are video game references in the movie, there are a lot of candy references as well. So if you're a fan of candy, you will really, really enjoy uh, Wreck-It Ralph. Um, but it, the story does not go in the direction that I thought it would whatsoever. There's a heavier emphasis on some of the other characters uh, other than, you know, R- Ralph himself. Um, but, you know, the main cast of four are definitely strong throughout. Lots of surprises. Um, lots of time spent with uh, with Vanellope Von Schweetz, as I said. And uh, a really... Um I, I kind of wish they had integrated more of the video game characters, like had them play a more important role, the ones that we know very well. Instead, they're kind of just cameos or, you know, little fleeting moments in the corners and you know, sort of references and things like that. So, um, you know, it's really focused on these original characters and the original worlds, uh, not so much the uh, the ones that they have had to license. And I'm sure there are money reasons for that, but also story reasons as well. Uh, the film itself doesn't really feel like a video game most of the time. It's a really a vibrant computer generated world it doesn't have a lot of texture to it very um i mean it's it's cg it's 3d and it's it's shaded well and then like i said it's very vibrant but it's all very sort of flat 
textures uh, uh, to it. Uh, the parts that felt more like a video game were probably the most enjoyable for me, but it is a fun balance between the quote-unquote real world and sort of the game worlds that they portray in there. And if you've watched the trailers for this film, um, you'll see that sort of the, uh, the moments that you see in the trailers... Uh, depict a lot of the funny moments that you see in the film, but definitely not all of them. There's a lot more comedy and a lot more to the movie that uh, that you definitely have not seen, um, which is good. It, you know, it's always nice to go into a movie and you haven't, you know, feel like, oh, I just saw everything in the uh, in the trailers. Uh, they definitely have sort of a great way that some of the characters move and behave sort of true to their games, like the, the Nice Landers, as they're called from the Fix-It Felix Jr. game, have very jerky uh, movements as they move around because they're supposed to be these little 8-bit characters and even when they're in full cg 3d mode they're still kind of jerky and and moving around like that which is uh which is amusing it's, you know it's, it's fun to see the sort of the attention to detail put in there uh this of course is a film not from pixar it's from walt disney feature animation and that's following up to tangled which was a huge success and i wouldn't say this you know record ralph is necessarily an instant classic like tangled has become of course it's a princess movie and everybody loves rapunzel uh but you know, Ralph is a... It's a good movie. Wreck-It Ralph, I definitely enjoyed it. The music is a, a wide variety of music throughout the whole thing uh, from, you know, similar sort of dubstep music you're hearing in the background here. You heard that Wreck-It Ralph song I played a minute ago. Then there's the, uh, the Sugar Rush theme song. A, it's a huge variety of music. Uh, some better than others depends on your own taste, but there's a lot of video gaming music throughout as well, the score and everything. So uh, very interesting and definitely stay all the way through the credits. The credits are phenomenal uh, throughout and all the way to the very end. 3D and everything just definitely stay uh, all the way. So Wreck-It Ralph hits uh, theaters uh, nationwide uh, November 2nd, a couple of weeks from now. If you want to play the Fix-It Felix Jr. game, you can head to Disney Quest. It's there. They're also touring the games around the country and making 20 stops. Uh, on, uh, for instance, on uh, October 26th through November 4th. It's going to be in Miami at game time, but it's going to 20 different cities. I'm sure that list is online somewhere, uh, so you can seek that out if you want to play Fix It Felix Jr. But uh, anyway, it's, uh, it's a good film. I definitely recommend seeing it, and uh, I, will, uh, I will certainly uh, check it out again at, uh, at some point and continue to look for all those, all those references. Uh, lots of fun. And now before we move into feature number two this week, let me put in a quick word about Lanyard Lab. If you've got a business to promote or maybe you need to wear a name tag ID card around your neck, uh, you want a custom lanyard to wear it with, head on over to lanyardlab.com and you can customize your own lanyard there. Just click anywhere that says get a quote, uh, fill out the uh, quick and easy quote request form, submit that to us with all your details. We'll email you back with the price quote along with the proof showing you what the lanyards will look like. It's all uh, no obligation, completely free to preview and then you can purchase it online or make any changes that you need so check it all out over at lanyardlab.com that's l-a-n-y-a-r-d-l-a-b.com So as I said earlier, we couldn't let an October show go by without having a bit of Halloween, and I've got some fun things to share this week. A couple of weeks ago, well, a few weeks ago, actually, I, uh, I'm sure I mentioned it here that I had, uh, and I certainly posted lots online about it, I hung around with the, the creators of Epic Mickey around the Magic Kingdom and around Walt Disney World, including of Warren Spector and other folks from Junction Point, walked around the Magic Kingdom, got to tour things, got to demo games, etc. Then there was a follow-up event just a couple of weeks ago 
show in California that I also attended at the Disneyland Resort to learn even more about Epic Mickey and the inspiration. Well, really, Epic Mickey 2 is what we're talking about here, which comes out November 18th, a little less than a month from now across many consoles. Had a chance to play it a little while, but I'm, I'm not talking about that this week other than to say uh, during that uh, event, was it was something really, really special. Um, I, I will certainly talk about the Epic Mickey portion of it all and share interviews with Warren, uh, who's a great guy, by the way. I'm really, really passionate about everything he does. Uh, I'll, I'll share that in the coming weeks as we get closer to Epic Mickey 2's release date. But I did want to mention here that part of this event in California, uh, which was a very, very special moment for me, which has nothing to do with the Haunted Mansion holiday music you're hearing in the background or anything Halloween whatsoever, is I got uh, to go on an abridged version of the Walk in Walt's Disneyland Footsteps tour and step foot inside Walt Disney's apartment above the firehouse at Disneyland for the very first time, something I've been wanting to do for a long, long, long time, and that was certainly uh, one of those special, special moments uh, that I will always remember. It's uh, Unfortunately, no photos were allowed. I'm showing some photos that I just found online for those of you watching the video versions. I don't have a picture of me inside the apartment, which is a little disappointing, but that's all right. I have it in my memories, and it was uh, something that is wonderful that they're offering that as part of this tour at Disneyland. Uh, well worth uh, uh, you know, going in there, going on this tour just to be able to see Walt's apartment. Definitely a very very special uh, place there. So uh, anyway, that aside, uh, speaking of uh, Halloween, um, so I was out there, you know, forgetting about all that for a moment, I was out there during this special time of year at Disneyland, which was Halloween time. And uh, of course, I, I wanted to uh, explore all that is Halloween time while I was there. And that's what I want to talk about a little bit this week, kind of a a yeah, trip report of sorts, or just kind of going over the highlights of what Halloween time is all about. And of course, based on this music in the background, my favorite thing of Halloween time at Disneyland, indeed, is the Haunted Mansion holiday. This is the Nightmare Before Christmas overlay of my favorite attraction. Of course, I love the Nightmare Before Christmas as well. So the blending of the two is just a phenomenal experience. I've seen it before a number of times, but it was uh, fun and exciting to get back there again this year. They always make some subtle tweaks and changes throughout the years. Uh, this year, they've got a Jack Jack Skellington and Sally doing photo ops right outside the mansion. Of course, it's Jack taking over the Haunted Mansion for Haunted Mansion Holiday, so it was great to be able to see them. Jack is wonderful in person, uh, speaking just as you hear him in the film, and uh, great personality to uh, to talk to there. Uh, in the Pet Cemetery outside Haunted Mansion Holiday this year, I'm pretty sure I mentioned this recently, there is a Sparky tombstone for the uh, Frankenweenie dog, of course, from Frankenweenie, uh, and what's wonderful about it is that it is a freshly dug up uh, a tombstone in that pet cemetery, which is, uh, you know, just one of those fun details that plays right into that story. Moving inside Haunted Mansion Holiday, it's the you know usual experience. Always a good time. The new changing portraits, all the new and different music that's uh, that's in there. Uh, I always particularly like looking on the left side of the changing portrait room, out the windows, because you see the nightmare band playing through the the lightning and the rain that's going on out there. It's one of the details a lot of people I think uh, miss while walking through there. Some new things I noticed this year. Madame Leota's uh, room looked a little bit different. There's still the floating tarot cards, but there's a sort of re themed it all to be Christmas ornaments. And I don't know if they did that last year or not. I, I don't think I went to Honor Mansion Holiday last year, but uh, it was new to me this year, at least. It was kind of fun to see Madame Leota floating around the room as a giant Christmas ornament. Uh, in the ballroom, of course, they always swap out the, uh, or, or add a new uh, gingerbread, massive gingerbread house in the middle of the ballroom table during uh, Haunted Mansion Holiday, and, and this year was certainly no exception. It smells gloriously of gingerbread in there, and this year's uh, gingerbread house is huge. I think it's 13 feet tall and is just a phenomenal sight. It's got, like, a ghost train going around it and zero flying around the top, and it just looks... Uh it just looks wonderful all the way through. So, uh, you know, Haunted Mansion Holiday as a whole, always a fun attraction. I actually posted a video of the whole ride for this year over on our YouTube channel, and I'll be uh, following up on all of this with an article on our website as well at, uh, at some point this week. So you can look for that video as well as more from, uh, from Halloween time over at InsideTheMagic.net. Moving on, however, from uh, Haunted Mansion Holiday, though I'll keep the music playing here in the background. Uh, nearby, there's a store. 
in uh, in New Orleans Square that had I noticed some great decorations this year that are nightmare themed. There was uh, the masks for Locke, Shock and Barrel up on a shelf in the uh, the store that was of course filled with nightmare merchandise. There was a great uh, a wreath that was made of bones and Christmas lights and a Jack Skellington style skull head on it. Uh, just these you know fun little details that Disney likes to litter around the park during Halloween time. Of course, also during Halloween time, there is the Ghost Galaxy overlay of Space Mountain, which is something I. Uh, I really, really enjoy it's the spooky, scary version of Space Mountain where these uh, sort of fiery nebula ghosts jump out at you and scream, and uh, it's it's just a, a lot of fun to uh, to ride through. And and I did videotape it. It's not a very good video because it's kind of dark in there, but I'll be posting that pretty soon if you want to see kind of this crazy, uh, uh, blurry, dark video of sort of what this experience. Uh, is like uh it's it's fun just walking around the park there's uh you know so many halloween decorations locked lots of pumpkins lots of jack-o'-lanterns just lining all of main street usa and town square and throughout the park it's just uh it's just fun to see all the different uh, halloween decorations disney puts out for halloween time which is still going on for the next uh next week and a half or so i uh, also had a chance to attend mickey's halloween party while i was out there which i've done before and it was largely the same as you know it's similar to not so scary out here in orlando um with trick-or-treating and, and all of that kind of thing there's a different sort of mini parade called mickey's costume party and again i'll be posting a video of that online as well kind of a cute little parade with really awful repetitive music uh the highlight for the night that was a surprise for me was sort of this good night moment with the villains on the the train station as you're leaving sort of this looping moment where they're all just there saying well everybody get out essentially but all the villains are there and you can kind of you can't really take a picture with them but you can kind of stand in front of them and talk uh, and, uh, and and take a picture sort of in front of them vaguely uh anyway it's a uh, dr facilier and the evil queen and maleficent and jafar and uh, a number of other villains are all up there just at the end of the night sort of a surprise kiss goodbye uh, on the way out which is uh, which is a fun way to end uh, the halloween party of course the halloween party is an upcharge it's not in Included with the regular admission at Disneyland. It's very much like a not so scary Halloween party uh, out here in Orlando, as I said. Um their version of the fireworks. Uh, you know, we have Hallow Wishes out here. They have Halloween Screams out there. It's uh, preferred, in my opinion. I like their version of the fireworks uh, more, but both are, are excellent shows. Uh, the Halloween Party is definitely, definitely a fun thing. But uh, something that really surprised me this year was uh, one of those sort of things that you hear about and you think, ah, it's just a throwaway. It's something called the Halloween Carnival at Big Thunder Ranch in Frontierland at Disneyland. And I thought, uh, you know, what, how, how good can that possibly be? It's just going to be this silly little, you know, thing off in the corner of the park. But it actually ended up being pretty big big and quite entertaining there of course is the petting zoo in there and they had all the the goats and the lambs and everything wearing these little halloween bandanas around their neck which was pretty amusing uh just to you know walk up to these animals who couldn't care less that you were there and and of course you have a chance to pet them and it's all in a halloween kind of uh environment there's a shack in there that uh is not quite a haunted house but they call it the scaredy crow shack and they decorated the inside with these sort of scarecrows with pumpkins on their heads and as you know nothing jumps out at you or anything but it's a fun little walkthrough thing uh but really the the bulk of this carnival is in the back area of the big thunder ranch and uh, it's themed to this sort of halloween fun carnival area it's got villains that you can uh, that you can meet and greet there's pumpkin carving very very elaborate pumpkin carving demonstrations in the middle of the whole thing there's a special performance by billy hill and the hillbillies on a the big thunder ranch jamboree stage um, there's of course photo opportunities with mickey mouse in his best halloween outfit as well as Minnie mouse as well and uh, it's just, a, you know, some games you can play. And it's just all, you know, it's all a lot of fun. It's uh, something I was really not expecting out of the park uh, to really enjoy this area as much as I have. So if you have a chance, definitely head out to Disneyland. Check out the Halloween Carnival in, uh, in Frontierland. It's sort of family-friendly fun that's a little bit different than what you're used to for, uh, for Halloween. Another fun uh, bit of Halloween uh, addition to the park that uh, I discovered while I was dining at Cafe Orleans, getting a Monte Cristo, of course, for dessert, they have a, uh, well, they actually have a whole special fall menu. Uh, for dessert, I ordered the pumpkin creme brulee, and it was absolutely delicious. You must go out to Cafe Orleans next time you're at Disneyland during this fall and order this dessert. It is, if you like creme brulee and or pumpkin, which I like both, you're just going to devour this thing. It is well worth however 
however much it cost. It wasn't that expensive, but it was uh, it was definitely good. Of course, if you, you don't like creme brulee or you don't like pumpkin, you probably won't like it. But uh, those of you who like both, like me, will definitely enjoy it. Over at Disney California Adventure, there's not too much Halloween going on. Most of the Halloween time is over at Disneyland. However, they do have some Frankenweenie fun set up uh, over there that has been going on since the movie came out. And a little bit before that, there's a great exhibit Um that uh, shows off. It's the same exhibit I saw out at Comic Con. Shows a lot with a lot of the stop motion models and sets that were used in the creation of the film, which is really nice to see them up close and in person and take pictures. And it just looks phenomenal. Uh, the, the amount of detail that the the creative team that created Frank and we put it into this exhibit is just uh, just mind blowing. And uh, to be able to see it all up and close, that's in the uh, animation area of uh, California Adventure, is wonderful. And then over in the Muppet Vision Theater, they're showing this extended 4D preview of Frank and Weenie, which if you I haven't seen the movie it kind of is a little spoilery but if you have seen it and you loved it as much as i did you must go see this like you might think oh i've already seen frank and we i don't need, need to see this but this is like a 4d experience sort of mini version of frank and we it's got some of the best scenes in there including the reanimation of sparky the dog scene but using all the lighting and uh, other effects in the muppet vision theater and as much as uh, it's just like i enjoyed the tron extended uh, tron legacy extended preview that was in there this frank and Weenie one is wonderful as well so Definitely check that out before it goes away. That's kind of the summary of what Halloween time is all about this year at Disneyland. But, of course, I wasn't about to go all the way out to California and have my only Halloween experience be at Disneyland. I couldn't help myself and, of course, had to head on over to... uh to Universal Studios Hollywood to take in a bit of uh, Halloween Horror Nights out there and give a great comparison to the Orlando event out here. And I'm not going to go on and on and on about it here because, uh, well, we're already in an hour of this show and I already posted a very, very lengthy review and report with lots of photos, lots of video from uh, Halloween Horror Nights at Universal Orlando. But in short, just to run through the experiences briefly, of course, there are uh, crazy clown go-go dancers. I think I mentioned a couple of weeks ago on the front uh, or on the show uh, at the front of the park that are always entirely entertaining. And immediately following that is a series of scare zones scattered throughout the park. And the scare zones were not great this year. It was a little bit repetitive from previous years. There's a clown's scare zone uh which is identical to when i went to the event two years ago i assume they would just keep recycling this clowns scare zone over and over which is not uh not you know i don't really like the fact that they reuse uh things out in hollywood but it's still quite entertaining there's also a scare zone called toys which is just kind of these bizarre i don't even know if you can call them toys they're just kind of these bizarre weird costumed characters walking around in fog and bright strobe lights and things like that uh not the greatest scare zone ever there's another scare zone called witches this year which i guess featured witches i don't know it was kind of dark in there and i couldn't really see what was going on too much and then the other uh, only scare zone remaining for hollywood's event this year is silent hill which basically means pyramid head and the nurses were uh were walking around in the area not really scaring anybody so much as just walking around i mean it was entertaining to watch them uh but i can't say that the area the brightly lit area was uh was particularly uh, uh, scary. So not fond of the scare zones in Hollywood this year. However, the haunted house experiences were fantastic. In order of my preference, there was the Walking Dead house. Uh, I liked it better than the Orlando version. Really, really excellent makeup. It looked like it was straight out of the uh, Walking Dead AMC TV show. Really, really phenomenal. The uh, Texas Chainsaw Massacre house this year was also excellent based on the original Texas Chainsaw Massacre. It wasn't one that I was expecting to like as much as I did. Definitely the scariest house of the bunch. Uh, the Silent Hill house, I think I prefer Orlando's version, but the Hollywood version was uh, enjoyable as well. There was more pyramid head to be found in there, which was good. Uh, Alice Cooper house in Hollywood is completely different than the Orlando one, completely different than the Alice Cooper house they had last year, and it was entertaining. It follows the seven deadly sins, and, vaguely, and uh, features a lot of really interesting visuals, and it's in 3D, which is uh, sometimes a plus. In this case, it was eh, you know, it was all right. Really bizarre haunted house is Universal Monsters Remix, in which they set the classic Universal Monsters to dubstep music, which I've now said dubstep more in this week's episode than I ever have in Inside the Magic History. Uh, but uh, it was an interesting experience. It kind of worked. It was entertaining. It wasn't real scary. And finally, there was the La Llorona house, uh, which uh, it was just kind of bizarre. I didn't think it was terribly scary. A lot of people think it's good and scary and fun, but I thought it was just kind of weird. 
Uh, Bill and Ted's excellent Halloween adventure in Hollywood is uh, is fantastic. It is definitely better than the Orlando version. It has this great plot that it follows, fo- uh, focusing on the Hunger Games, really parodying that and finding ways to pit pop culture uh, icons up against each other, fighting to the death, including uh, some Disney references in there as well. There's Fozzie the Bear, of course, from the Muppets was in there. There was some poking fun at John Carter, of course, which was not the most successful movie ever. There was some election humor, you know, Mitt Romney and Barack Obama were in there. Of course, Batman and Bane were uh, were present and being made fun of. And a good quarter of the show was really, really, really elaborate dance numbers, which I posted video of online as well. Uh, it's uh, They have some very, very talented dancers in Hollywood, far more than uh, what is in Orlando. The, their dance numbers are quite impressive. Uh, so you can definitely... Uh, You can definitely check that out over on our YouTube channel along with videos. Actually, I posted video walkthroughs of all of the haunted houses. They're very dark, hard to see, of course, uh, but they do allow recording out there. So if you want to see what their haunted houses are all about, uh, head on over to that review that I was talking about on the website or head over to the YouTube channel and you can see what the houses and the scare zones and all of that stuff is all about. Uh, To kind of round this out here, of course, there's the Terror Tram, which is their horror overlay of the backlot tour this year themed to The Walking Dead. Quite entertaining, but not anything terribly spectacular. What I did really enjoy was the fact that you could walk up to the Psycho House and get a photo op with Norman Bates this year, which was a nice addition. It's the first time they've ever done that at the event. And uh, finally, uh, I actually bought the VIP ticket this year because everything else was sold out. I didn't really have a choice, uh, and I didn't want to wait in line, so I you know, bought the most expensive uh, ticket that there was available, and I actually ended up uh, being happy that I did that. There was a nice lounge that was available to uh, rest and relax in uh, for, for those who bought VIP. There was a buffet of food that was included, and they also uh, threw in a special, well, didn't throw in, you paid for a special uh, backlot uh, tour on this comfortable version of the tram tour with cushy seats and uh, sort of this weird walking dark tour of the back lot which didn't really come off the way they wanted. They wanted it to be this creepy ghost story thing and eh, it was alright. I, I wouldn't buy the VIP tour just for this ghost story thing that they added but uh, definitely getting the unlimited front of the line access to the houses and, uh, and the, the extra food and all that is a nice bonus treat. So if you do want more from Halloween Horror Nights in uh, Universal Studios Hollywood definitely head on over to the website and on our YouTube channel and there's plenty Plenty, plenty more for you to read and watch and view uh, pictures and all that good stuff. Uh, one more bit of Halloween from uh, from California that I experienced was a new sort of haunted house-ish experience this year called the Bloom House of Horrors. It's in downtown Los Angeles from the producers of Paranormal Activity. And uh, it's set in this old theater in downtown uh, Los Angeles, really sort of this theatrical experience, more than just a sort of jump out and scare you haunted house, though there is that element as well. I was there, I think, only on the second or third night of operation for this experience, so they weren't quite up to speed yet, and it wasn't a perfect experience, but I did enjoy it overall. Um, Definitely sort of a unique experience sort of different uh, type of Halloween, uh, more of a story-driven, sending you in small groups, walking through this old theater, definitely some really cool visual elements, and I'll be posting more about that on the... uh the website as well so there is kind of a rundown of my crazy whirlwind uh, halloween trip to california as i said there's much much more from that trip in the coming weeks next week on this show of course is going to be a big halloween episode here uh even more so than everything i've been talking about sort of special halloween episode i guess i should call it uh being just a couple of days before halloween but then once we move on over to uh, uh, November. That's when I'll share a lot of that uh, epic Mickey stuff that I've been holding on to for months and months and weeks and weeks and all of that stuff. Uh, definitely mo- a lot from Warren Spector, the creator of Epic Mickey, and uh, uh, and much, much more my thoughts on the, the game for 3DS and Nintendo Wii and Wii U. In fact, I had a chance to play the Wii U and, and a, lot of, uh, a lot of other things like that. So, anyway, that'll, that'll do it for Halloween this week. Hi, Ricky. Hi, Ricky. Hey, Ricky. Hi, Ricky. Hi, Ricky. Hey, Ricky. Hey, Ricky, this is amazing. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls. Inside the Magic Listener Feedback.
So I don't think I did listener feedback uh, last week on the show. I definitely want to fit in some of it this week, though I won't be able to completely catch up because, as usual, I have an insane amount of emails to share. So we'll just kind of jump into it and see how many we can get accomplished here now that it is 3.45 in the morning as I am recording this. Probably should get to bed soon. In another four hours or so, I will have been up for a full day. Yet I am still awake and recording the show. So anyway, here we go. Uh, First up, I just do want to give a quick happy 15th birthday shout out to Andrew Prince, who's a big fan of the show. Happy birthday to Andrew. Now let's jump into the emails where Ryan from Illinois writes, Your interviews with Imagineers and others in the know at Walt Disney World are very insightful. I was wondering if next time you talk to somebody, you can ask about the mural that was in the old Snow White ride. I know Disney traditionally gives a nod to the prior occupant of that space with a new one replacing it. I wonder if the mural in the loading area will be part of the new Fairy Tale Hall or the new Mine Train uh, ride. Uh, Ryan, definitely a good question. Generally, Disney doesn't like to reveal sort of that type of information too early, certainly they sometimes give early looks at things and concept art and everything but so far with fairy tale hall they haven't released much of anything i think it's been one piece of concept art for for the princess fairy tale hall that's replacing the snow white ride and uh, i think most of the tributes to snow white are going to be worked into the mine train ride of course which is not opening for another couple of years very much still under construction so that's kind of a still a long time in the making and uh you know we'll stay on top of it and see if they they do have any sort of tributes to the classic snow white ride Next email comes in from Renee, who writes, uh, just a shout out to Vicky a few weeks ago. You cannot do Tokyo Disneyland in one day. Even with Fast Passes, there are two parks, and I would say go to Disney Sea rather than Tokyo Disneyland. Everything is mainly the same except for two rides, Pooh's Honey Hunt, Hunt and Monster Inc. ride and go seek. Disney Sea has more exotic rides, such as Journey to the Center of the Earth, etc. The only ride that is the same there as uh, Disneyland is uh, 20,000 Leagues. If you're a nostalgia freak like me, you finally get to see it. And uh, all other rides are different. Try seeing the shows, too. Tokyo Disneyland was meant to be taken in slowly. Lots of shows and lots of highly detailed rides. Uh, Renee, thanks for uh, that little tidbit about uh, Tokyo. I know somebody had been asking about it, and I have not been there. Definitely really, really looking forward to uh, to getting out to those parks someday. Next email comes in from Rob, who writes, just a quick note about uh, tricks to getting discount tickets to Disney. Recently ran the Disneyland Half Marathon, and they sell discounted theme park tickets through their partners at Get Travel. However, you do not need to be a runner to buy these tickets. So I was able to get a four-day park hopper for $189 versus $275 at the gate. You don't have to be a runner to buy these theme park tickets. Anyone can take advantage of them. They never ask if you're participating in the event, and the tickets are valid through uh, December 15th of 2012, so you don't have to go to the parks during the half marathon. There are caveats. You need to either attend the fitness expo to pick them up or have them mailed to you for about 20 bucks. and the deadline uh, for ordering is over a month before the event, so you can't do this at the last minute. Uh, Rob, good tip for getting, uh, getting a ticket discount. Donna writes in saying, now that you have seen an amazing amount of the new fantasy land, how do you think it's going to affect the crowds? Is the Magic Kingdom uh, capacity going to be increased due to the expansion? We've all stood in the giant sea of humans trying to exit the park after fireworks. How bad is it going to be now? Did you notice the viewing areas for fireworks in new fantasy land? Seems like they need an additional exit in the back of the park like Epcot. Has. Uh, Donna, good questions. And no, I don't think New Fantasyland is big enough to have a huge impact on the crowds there. It's it's not a draw like the Wizarding World of Harry Potter is. And, you know, it's not going to bring in loads of new fans who are fans of, well, Fantasyland because it's just Fantasyland. I mean, yes, it's a great and it's phenomenal and it's detailed and it's got new attractions to the park. But I don't see it as being a giant boost to attendance for Magic Kingdom, which is already uh, you know, the m- most attended park in the United States year after year. It's uh, certainly going to draw crowds who, you know, were waiting for it to open for vacation and that kind of thing, but I don't see it as being any kind of a capacity issue whatsoever. It's just sort of more entertainment for an already entertaining park. As far as the fireworks, you are way closer to the fireworks launching point when you're in New Fantasyland, and they are definitely bursting high up overhead, and they seems like they had the fireworks viewing in mind because they erupt behind Beast Castle, which obviously is a lot smaller than Cinderella Castle, and you can see a lot of really great uh, spots in New Fantasyland to watch the fireworks. Next up, an email from Sarah from Illinois who writes, I love the show and appreciate all you do as someone eagerly awaiting a Disney vacation next June. I heard of some rumors about Hollywood Studios and wanted to gather your thoughts. There are rumors 
that in the near future, Voyage of the Little Mermaid and Beauty and the Beast stage shows will be removed and replaced with Phineas and Ferb and a Tangled stage show, respectively. I wanted to know if you had heard about this at all. Sarah, I've heard the rumors. That's about it. That's that's where it stops. Uh, yeah, you know, with Journey of the Little Mermaid at the Magic Kingdom now, the ride, I can see Voyage of the Little Mermaid definitely uh, has the potential of being replaced over at Hollywood Studios. Phineas and Ferb certainly would fit into that area very well. Beauty and the Beast, likewise. There's now a giant Beauty and the Beast area in New Fantasyland at the Magic Kingdom, so they don't really necessarily need a stage show over at Hollywood Studios as well. And Tangled, hugely popular, really deserves a stage show. So if those are true, I am all for it. Brian writes in and says, has Test Track 2.0 had an opening date yet? And he probably wrote to me before I announced the date last year. It's uh, December 6th is the opening date. Anyway, Brian continues, my family and I are heading to Disney World January 6th. Would any of the Christmas decorations still be up, specifically the Osborne uh, lights? Third, have you reached an audience level where you now get stopped in the park by guests who recognize you and ask for a picture? Uh, the Christmas decorations may still be up to some extent in early January. They do take them down uh, uh, about a week into January. Osborne lights, you may not uh, have a chance to see them, but you probably will still get a hint of, uh, of Christmas in early January when you are here. Uh, as far as being stopped in the park, yes, yes, quite regularly. In fact, I pretty much cannot go uh, not only to Disney parks, but any theme park, uh, Florida, California, even like Comic-Con or anything that even vaguely relates to what I do, uh, I pretty much do, yes, get recognized and stopped and uh, and I pose for pictures and, and all of that sort of thing, which is great. You know, I love meeting every, all of you out there who are listening, who are watching, who are, you know, reading on the website and all of that. Uh, so, yes, to answer your question, it does happen quite frequently, but it's fun. You know, I love meeting uh, meeting everybody out there. If you ever see me in the parks or, or wherever, definitely, you know, be sure to stop me, you know, yell out my name, whatever say hi i've had people on rides yelling out things to me in the distance and it's always an amusing moment so yes please please do say hi uh let's see uh, you know what i'm gonna stop the emails right there because we're now uh it's getting close to four in the morning and i probably should go to bed so uh that'll do it for listener feedback this week And that will do it for show 394, uh, Wreck-It Ralph. Great movie. Definitely go see it for sure, especially if you are a video game fan. You will enjoy it tremendously. Uh, beyond that, uh, lots of Halloween excitement still going on. Definitely head on over to InsideTheMagic.net. There's a big banner on the front page. You can't miss it. Click on that for everything Halloween. As I said, I'll be posting more from Disneyland soon. Lots of videos from there. I've already posted a million things from Halloween Horror Nights on both coasts now, as well as many other events. Still more going on throughout this week, including, don't forget about the little Haunted Mansion ghost thing I was talking about earlier. Definitely check back to InsideTheMagic.net uh, on Monday, October 22nd for a uh, sort of an update on that. That's when I sort of have been promised that I will have something to share uh, that should be if it's what I think it is, should be pretty pretty interesting and, and, and possibly very exciting. So uh, check to the website definitely uh, midday or so on, uh, on Monday. Uh, so uh, there we are, getting close to Halloween of course. Uh, next week I will be sharing some uh, sort of, uh, I'm going to do things a little bit differently this year on the show for sort of the quote unquote big Halloween show. It's not going to be uh, the same as it has been year after year here, uh, trying something new that I think you'll enjoy. Uh, at least I hope you do. So uh, come back for that next week. And then when we move into November, of course, we'll be shifting gears away from Halloween, uh, unfortunately. I hate it when that happens. Uh, but uh, we talk about other things like Epic Mickey, which I mentioned, but also moving into the Christmas season, uh, which is always a wonderful time of year as well. And, uh, you know, this whole fourth quarter of the year is just a phenomenal time to be in theme parks. And with New Fantasyland going on, coming up with more previews of that, as well as the grand openings of that and Test Track and Splitsville and other things in early December, it's going to be an exciting exciting few weeks coming up so definitely keep on tuning back and hitting the website for all of the uh all of the excitement i do want to thank magical travel for sponsoring this week's episode of inside the magic you can find out more about their services by visiting magicaltravel.com and also don't forget to check out the video game just dance disney party coming out in stores just a couple of days 
from now. And uh, InsideTheMagic.net is the website. Follow us on Twitter, and Facebook, and YouTube, and, uh, you know, all that good stuff. So there it is. Uh, thanks very much for listening and for watching each and every week. Have a magical week. Bye. There's a great big beautiful tomorrow. Just a dream of